you know, there's something really awesome about this that we haven't really seen yet, which is Titan people working together. I feel like that creates a lot of potential for the future. I'll bet that's going to be a bigger thing later, as more people come into their powers or whatever. Yeah, there's a lot at stake. I like how Erwin actually paid respect to the military police. I mean, it seemed like he doesn't just see them as expendable, which they are, let's be real. They're totally expendable. Do they even deserve to breathe? Charge! We already believe you. <laughs> Man, this cast, this cast of protagonists, they just love their killing. Ew. <laughs> now don't freak out. I bet she's most of all just really confused. Yeah. I feel like there's a huge danger here for her pushing Krista away. And I don't even totally mean that based on plot events. I just mean the way she's so obsessive about it. The neediness behind it is a lot. And that idea of, I did it for your own good, right? Or I did it because I love you, might have the opposite of its intended effect. Because this is a lot for Krista to process. And also I can see Krista getting a little bit jaded just because it seems like from here on out, a lot of people are going to be after her. Or like everybody wants a piece of her. And it's not just because they like her, right? Like she has something they need. No, this is something she came to on her own. That's really sweet, but is it true? What? Wait, so is she saying that when she ate Marcel, she got some of his powers? Is it the power to transform at will? Anyway, what she's saying seems to be not true, or not the whole truth, because we saw the way she was talking about Krista last episode, about how she just needs her, how Krista's the only one who will understand her or something like that. So why say that to Krista at all? I wonder how much Krista knows. I believe that's how it started, but that's not where she is now. Yeah, I mean, that feels true to me, one way or the other. Speaking of neediness, this is a lot for Historia to take in. That's very sweet, but it's a little bit dangerous, no? Like, this is a lot. There's a lot wrapped up in this whole relationship. Hannes, please be alright. I really don't want Hannes to die because of this. Well, Ymir just drew her line in the sand, for sure. Whoa. <laughs> Those eyes, though. Damn. She's nuts. She's going nuts. She's just taking on this whole thing at the same time. Not much of a choice there. Oof. Putting this choice on Krista. That makes her enemies of Ymir, for sure. Chris is the only thing holding this together. They're like a hair away from just totally destroying each other. This whole setup is exciting, but terrifying. Like part of the terror comes from the fact that they're just so desperate. You could just feel the desperation of so many of the characters. Mikasa's philosophy seems to be something like, most of the world is cruelty and about survival. And so what you do, the way you find meaning in life is cling desperately to the people you care about. And that's your entire world and your sole responsibility and you have to do everything you can to protect that. Which to some degree is understandable. Like I talked about a few episodes ago, it makes sense why Mikasa is there. But I feel like Ymir is actually in a very similar place where she feels let down by the world. She made a very similar speech in her flashback and Historia is really the only thing from which she can derive value in her own life. So she's gonna cling extra hard to that. But then Historia, I feel like is the you know, the philosophy I like best out of this scene, where she obviously has her inner world, but she also can push her understanding and awareness outside of that. I really like the fact that she has a level head, especially in this situation where there are so many unknowns. Historia feels like she actually can function in life with hope. She hasn't sunk all the way down into that survival-only mentality like a lot of the other characters. 
Aaron doesn't know how to quit. <laughs> Ooh, this is a huge risk, just resting on Reiner's chest. It's not a great look. I mean, you're literally riding him right now as a... <laughs> as the armored titan. Say something, Bertholdt. No, not everything was a lie. Just a lot of it was a lie. No, this hurts Berthold too. You don't know that. I mean, you do know that, but you don't know what that means. To me, that felt like an especially dark moment for Mikasa. I feel like I understand where she's coming from pretty well, and I don't really blame her. She wants to save Eren. That's fine. What made it feel dark, I think, is the fact that it's pretty clear that there is more to this. She asks, what else do you want to know? The answer is a lot. Like, there's a lot that you should want to know. And reading into this a little bit, or a lot, she knows that. She's very intelligent, but not only does it not matter to her, she's trying to push or persuade the others out of that thinking as well. And she's really influential. It seems like they look up to her and they will listen to her. And so to me, it feels like she has the power to enact what's essentially a death sentence for these characters. And she's probably okay with that no matter what the unknowns are, as long as she gets Eren back. It really does seem like she'll do anything, like anything to get Eren back. <laughs> This is a smart move, humanizing himself. Yeah, I mean, they have a huge burden. They gotta carry this on their conscience their entire lives. Yeah, their feelings for them are clearly real. Yeah, a lot of them are very similar. They're all just lost kids. I really do think that the heaviest burden you can carry, like the biggest emotional baggage you could have, is the knowledge of your own wrongdoing. That's the kind of thing that doesn't go away. Like, people harming you can be really painful and really difficult to get over, but the way out of that, I feel, is to recognize that it wasn't about you, right? You can absolve yourself of some of the, the self-loathing or the negative carryover from those experiences by just recognizing that people are people and they're flawed, and that while we may internalize those flaws, ultimately, they're they're not our fault. It's not about us. It's about the other person's weakness. But when you do something wrong, there's no escaping in that way. That is 100% on you, so there's no reconciling it with, you know, the, the image we want to have of ourselves of being good people or decent people. So Reiner and Bertholdt, they must be in incredible pain. The lie that the cadets are referring to about their lives together must have torn those two apart because they've actually been living that lie. It's tricky because it doesn't make things better, but for me, it does create a lot of sympathy for, for them as characters. <laughs> Hannes, I want you to get away from there. <laughs> He's got a plan, though. Oh, he circled around him. Erwin's gonna get ya. This is gonna end bad for someone. <laughs> so satisfying. There's a lot of titans, though. Man, look at Erwin just charging in by himself. This is so difficult. <laughs> They're committed. That was the plan. Mikasa does not care. <gasps> no! Forget Eren! Save Erwin! <laughs> He's still giving orders. Holy, oof. Damn, look how much they respect Erwin that they, they follow his commands. Oh my God, everyone's getting it. She's losing sight a little bit. Nice save. <gasps> no. 
There's a big line to be crossed here though. For me right now, I'm sort of not on a side. My side is that I like a lot of these characters, and so for me where it will cross the line is if Reiner and Berthold actually kill one of the, the cadets. Because for me, I understand they have other objectives, they have other goals. But my gut sense is that no matter what that objective is, killing the cadets, killing their friends would be wrong. That action was great though. Although Erwin getting his arm bitten off nearly, nearly killed me. But you gotta be really careful not to fall into the ends justify the means thinking here. Now Armin is a force. He could actually do something. Damn, he's just so sharp. He's gonna bring up Annie. It just hits different when Armin does it. They don't know the truth, right? They don't know what happened to Annie. Oh man, Armin is kind of manipulative. Is that Erwin? He came back with one arm? Wow. What about Historia though? Where is she gonna fall? Congratulations. Well, that decides it, I guess. Did he just used that as a titan grenade? Wow, they explode on impact. It's crazy. You guys ever played Disgaea? They're like the penguins. Prinnies, that's what they're called. Eren. Eren. Oh no, is it the titan who ate his mom? Well, I know what Aaron's doing next episode. <laughs> Going berserk. So that episode was intense. It's extra nerve wracking for me because I can't fully get behind any of them. I feel like there are just so many ways this can go wrong and very few ways, if any, that this can go right. What you have is a bunch of characters that I've grown to like who mostly are operating from this place of chronic pain and sadness with varying philosophies that bring them into conflict with each other. I gotta say though, the person who scares me most in this episode is Mikasa, just because of what she's willing to do and how quickly she's willing to do it. To me, that's a reflection of Eren's character in her, which is not really surprising considering the fact that his actions, his philosophy even, had a huge influence on her. Second to that is Armin, because he's just so sharp, it's getting increasingly clear that he's really good at getting in people's heads. Not only is he smart, just generally speaking, and, you know, able to sniff things out and read between the lines, he is really good at getting people to do what he wants, which kind of a villain quality. I said once as a joke that, you know, what if Armin is the villain? But he is, he's got some darkness too. There's a lot of ends justify the means thinking in a lot of these characters. And for me, it's almost inevitable that that's going to lead to tragedy. On a more positive note, epic moment from Erwin, like literally getting his arm ripped off, continuing to give orders, which were then followed because of how loyal his subordinates are, and then coming back with one arm, definitely delivering on my expectations of him. And also on a positive note, Historia. I feel like Historia's mind is in the right place somewhat, where her priority is not like sides or outcome, but the people that are around her. That's something that speaks to me personally. I think you pay a huge price when you put your objectives above common decency and humanity. And that's especially true when you have limited understanding of what's going on. I don't know, it's very complex. It's a lot of fun. This episode, it didn't leave me much room to breathe. And even crazier, now we have this extra element entering. We have this Titan that we know, joining the battle. So it's possible that all this fighting will be interrupted by just Eren, enough so to make this whole conflict seem secondary to what's gonna happen when he wakes up. But yeah, I guess that's the second to last episode of season two. So I'll see you next time for the finale.